Hello everyone. From today onwards, we are going to start with the new topic, shell scripting. So in this video, I will be covering up the basics, which will include that why we need to make up a script, how to make the script and how to execute the script. So let us start with the first question that comes to our mind that what is shell script? So shell script is nothing but a sequence of commands that are written in a file which we call as a script. So why do we build up a script? The reason is sometimes you might require to execute a certain sequence of steps or a certain sequence of commands in a repetitive manner. Let us suppose that you want to execute a few commands back to back. For example, first you want to execute ls, then you want date and then you want calendar. Now you want this to do over and over again. So every time it's very inconvenient that you execute three commands. If there are only three commands, even then you can think, okay, I can do it. But what if there are 30 commands that you need to execute time and again, like every day, once in every day, then what you will do? So what we can do is we write that set of commands in a file, which we call a script. And then we run that single script once whenever it is required. To add on to that, we can even automate that script by using another set of commands with which that script will run automatically whenever you have specified the time and date. So what I will do rather than executing these three or let us suppose 30 commands, I will make a script and write these three commands in that script. Now, what are the steps to write a shell script? The very first step is to create a file which will contain all the necessary commands or sequence of steps that is required to be followed. Now to create this script, you can use any editor you want. There's one common query that most of the students have. And the query is whether I need to give an extension to this file. It's totally optional. Even if you give an extension or you don't give an extension, it will not matter at all. But just as a good practice, it's better that you give it an extension .sh. Okay, it will give a hint to anyone who views that file okay, that it's a shell script. For example, for all the C files, you normally have an extension .c. For Python files, you have .py. So just to follow that convention, it's good that you give an extension .sh. But even if you don't give an extension, it's hardly going to matter. Okay, we will see that. The second step is that you need to make the script executable. Okay, so you need to give the execute permission on the script. The third step is you run the script and the common way of doing it is using the command dot slash and then the script name. Okay, so we'll just do all these steps one by one. So now the first step was to create a script. So to create a script, you need an editor. So I'm going to use the nano editor so nano and you write here any file name. So let's suppose that the file name is script one. Now remember it's optional. If you want to give this extension, you can. If you don't want, then also it's fine. So I'm not going to give the extension just to show you that it will not matter. Okay, now there were three steps or there were three commands that I told you that I need to do them in a sequence. So the first one was ls, then date, and then cat. Oh, sorry, cal. So you can write here n number of steps or n number of commands. So one last command I'm going to use echo. Okay. Uh, this is the last command. All right. So that's it. Save it and exit. So I'm done with the first step. I have created my script, written all the steps that I want to execute. Second step is make it executable. So for that, if I just show you the permissions on this. So you can see that there is no execute permission here, right? So I'm going to use change mode u plus x and then the name of the script, which is script one. If I check the permissions again and now the execute permission is there. Now the third and final step is to run this. So you need to write a dot slash and the script name dot slash means that you are giving the path dot means the current working directory. Within the current working directory, there is a script called script1. Press enter and then you see the output of all the four commands that I have written. 
this is the output for ls right and then this one is for date this one is for calendar and the last one was the echo command so this is the last command right in the same manner you can write any number of commands or any number of steps okay now i'm just going to give you one more example let's take another file let us post script 2 and here now another scenario where you might want to use script is you want to perform a task n number of times okay so you can do what you can put up a for loop hello so this is going to print echo 10 times so i wanted to do it 10 times so you can do anything like this just an example whatever you want now one of the methods to execute i have already told you that you need to give the execute permission first and then use dot slash and name of the script this is an alternate way also to run the script without requiring to change the permissions to execute permission so if i show you the permissions on this file script 2 you can see there is no execute permission so the second method is you use this bash command and then write the script name so you can see hello 10 times okay but if i try doing this dot slash script 2 it will give me an error permission denied for this method i have to change the permission on script 2 and then write dot slash script 2 and the same result okay so there are two methods to run it one requires the changing the permission and the other one if you use the bash command then you don't require to make the script executable now the last thing from the introduction point of view is the shebang now what is the shebang if you have tried learning shell script either from a book or from a reliable internet source you will see that the very first line of every script starts with either this line or this something like this now what this tells the system is which interpreter to use by default to execute the script now sh is the born shell and bash is the born again shell so it's just like a improved version of the born shell in many other scripting languages also such as Perl or in python you will see a certain similar kind of a line which tells that okay you need to use this particular interpreter for executing the Perl script and the other one for python scripts because the system will not know what kind of a code you have written whether it's a python code or a Perl code or a simple shell script so you need to tell which interpreter to use if you don't write anything like I, in the two scripts that i have shown you i have not written this line this means that it is going to pick up the default interpreter for a shell script so it is going to assume that whatever you've written is a shell script now it uses sh or bash depends upon the distribution that you are using okay so it will not matter in most of it in most of the cases uh, for the very basic scripts that you write it will not have an impact but it's a good practice if you can follow you should explicitly tell which interpreter to use so we have already written a few scripts script 1 and script 2 so now if i modify the script 2 that i have written so here if i use hash exclamation mark bin and bash save it rerun this so see it is hardly having any impact it's a similar kind of an output which i had without using the shebang line but now if i modify this sorry if i modify this and write here sh this means i'm going to use this particular interval not the bash but sh bond shell now if i compile this dot slash script 2 you will see it giving me an error okay for the loop variable because it's not how the bash interprets the for loop okay sometimes the interpreter that you are using will matter so that was all about the basics of shell script that is how to make a shell script how to execute it and when and when not to use the shebang line from the next video we are going to learn about the variables and how to use those variables how to declare variables so 
do subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss out on any of the upcoming videos till then keep watching don't forget to subscribe and share see you in the next class